Over the last 40 years, I've told a lot of stories on TV, and it was my job to create and produce reality shows, shows that provide a window into people's lives. And in my business, you're only as good as your last show. So right now, I'm known as this guy. There we go. I readily admit that I have way too many rats. He literally sees them as his children. You know what these rats are going to go. <laughs> There's rats everywhere, man. They're coming. Oh, gosh. It's his intestines hanging out, Glenn. You need to make the decision to put it down. Yeah. Thank you. When people find out I'm responsible for hoarders, the first reaction is, that is the sickest show I have ever seen. Is it real? And what I say, yeah, it is real, very real. The garbage, the filth, the bugs. In fact, sometimes the crews need full hazmat suits to just to do the shoot. So you can just imagine what it's like out there. Well, <laughs> I'm not here to talk about the hoarder's experience. What I'm here to talk about is why Hoarders worked and why I captured an audience. And I, I feel that I've learned that telling stories. And, and the secret really is, is knowing your audience, knowing your audience. Um, whether you're telling a, a story to, to sell something or you're putting together a slideshow for a project or simply trying to be the most fascinating person at a party the one thing people overlook when they're telling a story, and it's very important, is knowing their audience. They need to know their audience. Now, some people might say, no, the most important thing is all stories need a beginning, middle, and end. All stories need a point. To me, that's the given. If your story doesn't have those elements, it's probably a pretty crappy story. <laughs> no, what I'm talking about is capturing your audience first, engaging them at a deeper level right off the top. Okay, um, how many times have you guys been trapped in a conversation with someone whose sole purpose in talking to you is to talk about themselves, right? It's brutal. Well, I was, uh, I was recently at a memorial uh, for a nan who passed away. You know, not the sort of place you want to be the life of the party at. But uh, there was this one guy, clearly a successful person because... Uh, Within moments of talking to him, you knew uh, he had a car collection, he had properties, he took amazing vacations. The guy had a fabulous life. We was working the table, and, and the guy was relentless. He kept trying to engage me in conversation, trying to find common ground. And then he, uh, he found, I went to, found out I went to the University of Oregon and proceeded to tell the story about two uh, Oregon Duck fans that were completely drunk. And he started to tell the story. And I immediately realized it had no point. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so I, I'm thinking about this guy. And I'm saying, like, you know, this is a memorial, man. I mean, what is your deal? Well, it, he finally, in the last chapter to engage me, he finally brings up hoarders. And he says, man, man, he goes, I'm a hoarder. I'm a wine hoarder. Uh, so I, so I, uh, so I politely excused myself from the table to go kill myself because <laughs> clearly he didn't know his audience. And in this case, it was brutal. Oh. <laughs> and I know many of you have been in those situations. So when, uh, when you're creating your story, one of, the thing, one of the pieces of advice you hear is, uh, start with what you know. I think that's a pretty good piece of advice. But I would say if you're trying to capture an audience, start with what they know, what your audience knows. Okay? In some cases, that's pretty easy. You're telling a your story to friends, family, uh, colleagues. But what if you don't know your audience? How do you know the unknown? Well, that's when you need to fall back to your life experiences. You know, what are those things we've all shared and been through? You know, uh, like the guy, you're getting trapped behind the guy going 40 miles an hour in the fast lane on the freeway. How about having to listen to that ass on his cell phone talking a little too loud in a quiet room? It's bad. Um, t t what I think is tapping into shared experiences is the key to capturing an audience. And that's why Hoarders works, because we all know the tendency. 
not, I'm not talking about living knee deep in garbage and walking around in human waste, no. What I'm talking about is that junk drawer we all have. The idea that we all understand objects hold emotional meaning to us. You know, the, 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 the keychain you got from Disney World, uh, the signed baseball card. What about that jar of nail clippings you've kept and added to for the last 30 years, right? <laughs> Porter. <laughs> Knowing your audience is the key to capturing one. So uh, I was, I was um, leaving Las Vegas one evening, trying to get back to Seattle. And I was on the second to the last flight out. And uh, it was not a full flight. So I figured, this is good. This is good. You know, It would be a nice, easy flight. But then, of course, Alaska cancels the last flight. And everybody goes on my flight. And, um, and so, we're, so, so we're, we're packed, and we're boarding the plane, and it's going slow, and you know, you're walking down, and then some jackass starts mooing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, so I finally get to my seat, and I'm sitting in the second to the last row on the aisle, and there's an open seat next to me. I think, well, this is great. This is great. But, you know, that's not going to last. People are coming on board. And, uh, and then they make the announcement they're getting ready to close the door. And then the stragglers come on, and the seat's still open. So I, uh, you know, I look up, and there is this mountain of a man <laughs> coming down the aisle. And he gets about halfway, and the guy sitting on the other side of the empty seat starts waving, calling his name. And I'm going, oh, shit. I go, maybe I shouldn't have made that mooing sound. And <laughs> well, anyway, he gets up to the seat. He looks down at me, and he says, hey, partner, you're a little fella. Why don't you sit in that middle seat there and give us all some elbow room? Yeah, elbow room. And so I'm thinking, yeah, you know, I'm thinking like, no way, no way. I'm not giving up my seat. So I'm trying to think of something incredibly clever to say to the guy. You know, like, get in your seat, let's go. And, and I look up at him, I say, no. No, no speak English. <laughs> you know, so it worked. And so he got the idea. He lowers himself in the seat. I'm pressed up against the armrest, hanging half in the aisle. We're taking off. And I try to make myself as small as possible. Uh, and then I, I said, like, okay, sleep. So try to go to sleep. And I do. I do. I fall asleep. And then it happens. I wake up gasping for air. The oxygen's gone. We've decompressed. We're crashing. And I open my eyes, and everything's cool. Everything's cool. And then I look to my left, and his face is right there. He's asleep. And I realize for the last 30 minutes, I've been inhaling his exhale. <laughs> I was slowly being asphyxiated. I know. Gross, gross. But, you know. Don't forget, I'm this guy. <laughs> OK, so what have we learned from uh, this story, other than bring your own oxygen? Well, first off, uh, first off, I started with something that everyone who's flown knows, a common experience, to hook you. Once hooked, a good storyteller can take you anywhere they want to go. If they're really good, they'll keep you engaged by, 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 by twists and turns in their story, cliffhangers keeping you waiting for that next piece of story. Knowing an audience is the key to capturing one. So, uh, so, so back at the memorial, I'm getting ready to leave. I'd risen from the dead, obviously. And, and the wine hoarder is off in the corner talking to someone. And he's just going at it. And I say, OK, I have to listen to this. And so, I, uh, so here's what I heard. He goes, you two, oh my god, I had to install two more car lifts in my garage from my collection. I think you're like, wow, tough life. Anyway, it was probably, well, I, there's no other word for it other than the douchiest moment I've ever experienced <laughs> in my life. But it was great because I knew I was right. I knew I was right. He had engaged his audience with what they knew. And now he knows what all great storytellers know, and that is how to capture an audience. Thank you.